Okay, this video was requested by Death Mastar Zero. Uh, he's preparing, he or she is preparing for a uh, recital coming up in a couple of months, and so here is a vi YouTube video that I found on the Mazurka. I don't know this Mazurka by Milinarski myself, and so I'm just going to give a commentary on this, and if I feel like there's something that I can demonstrate, then I will. Otherwise, I'll just kind of talk you through it. So hopefully this will help. This girl has the right idea with, um... on the, the, uh, up bows preceding the chords, so... We do want to come off the string because it is a mazurka and you want to kind of feel like... Sorry, I don't know if I'm on this camera. You want to feel like you're coming, uh... Yum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, like it's, like it's jumping. So that's correct. When she comes back down in the chord, though, I think she might be having a little too much uh, stress here in, their, in her fingers. Let's see. And it actually might be originating from her wrist, because if I, if I saw correctly, she's bending her wrist kind of like this. Let's see if she does it, because I know that it plays it again. Okay, so what she's doing is, it's kind of like this. So she's actually using her wrist a little bit uh, to make, pull the chord. So, and that's going to get you a little bit of a, a stressed sound. So what I would recommend is to make, instead of doing it with your wrist and I would suggest when you bring it up, let your wrist be fluid. And so when it lands, all it does is it, it kind of, it follows the motion of your elbow. So what what really ha is happening is your elbow is starting the motion, and then because your elbow starts the motion, you're in very slow motion, your wrist follows it. See how the wrist follows it? As opposed to the wrist telling it to do it. So this is with the wrist telling it, and this is with the elbow leading. It's a subtle difference visually, but you can tell the difference of sound, if I can do it correctly. And that will give you more of a ringing sound. So focus on letting your elbow lead through the chords and not your wrist trying to do the chords themselves. And uh, I believe it's smarter, even though you're coming off the string, it's smart to start from the string uh, fr to when you play the chord. So instead of... It's... So what I'm saying here is you do come off the string, but I want you to come back down on the string before you pull the chord, and that way you won't get this um, kind of harsh sounding. Instead of that, you get, and that gives it a chance, gives the hair a chance to uh, grip the bow and make it ring like that. Let's keep going. And on that, da -da 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 -dum -ba -dum, that first chord is a little harsh. Okay, now this part is it gives you a chance. Uh, you can really be expressive here. You can. It's a melody, and it kind of comes out of almost nowhere. Like you got this dum ba ya bum bum, and then ya da 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 dum ba dum. So this is what we call musical contrast making sure that it makes it that it's different than the first section. So you've got the second section which is different than the first section. And what that does for the audience is it really gives them a chance to experience a whole um, different whole new layer of musicality that they didn't have when you first started. So instead of you see how that it sounds like a mazurka to me, but I don't think this passage should sound like the beginning. It should be more of a And really get down, see, uh... You 
see what I did? I don't know if you can hear it on my, my camera because it, it equalizes the volume, but what I did was I got to hear, play it really softly, and then more, more. You see how that, it's, it's, it's lyrical and it's flowing, and that's the kind of thing that I'd like to hear personally in this piece. And this is without me seeing the music, so I apologize if that's wrong, um, if the composer didn't intend that, but I think he did, um, because of the way that the first part is set up. Uh, naturally, and this, this goes along with in almost every piece of music that you play, there's typically a, a fast, kind of rambunctious passage, and there's a, a, sl a slower lyrical passage. And so make sure you make that distinction so it doesn't all sound the same. If it sounds the same, then you'll lose the audience. But if it sounds different enough and it's engaging, then I think that'll that'll make the keep the audience with you. So Okay, so we went through all that. I also made a note to myself that at a minute or say 2 minutes 30 seconds there's uh, some double stops. I'm going to grab those. So it's so I'm not sure exactly what those notes are, but it sounds like maybe it's so what I'm doing here is do you see how my hand kind of collapses into the into the um, the four and the two? The reason why I'm doing that is because if I try to reach for it here, if you see from here, my pinky has a hard time getting to the string, partly because the way that my fingers are, they naturally the pinky naturally curves in a little bit, um, and so it's hard for me to reach uh, a four over here on, on a double without hitting the other string. When you hit the other string then you lose the sound of, of the A string. You see how that kind of squeaks and you don't like that? And I don't like that either. So what I do is I bring my elbow right here, I bring my elbow underneath a little bit. In preparation, what bringing under, if you let your hand be relaxed and bring your elbow underneath, your hand, what it does is it turns. It naturally rounds itself. And by rounding, the, the pinky gets closer to the, the D and the G strings. See, so, when I do that, then I can hit the note. Another trick that I use personally because of the fact that my finger likes to curve in away from where it should be, um, I also I also stop the bow just barely before I play the note. I try not to try not to make it noticeable. And that way, I'm stopping it right about here. Just so that I can mask that sound of the, the squeaking. If you do it well enough, then you can't really hear the difference. And that's the only way that I found that I can play um, from this note to without getting that squeak where my pinky's hitting the other string. So. Whatever those notes are. So I hope that helps. Let me just see if there's anything else in here. I, I don't believe so. Um, maybe just talk a little bit about this other passage that's preceding the doubles. Now listen to the piano. The piano is what has the melody here. Okay, so this part is the violin having the melody. Now you hear the, the piano taking over, and then it hands it back. Okay, now listen. You hear that? That's now in the piano. So make sure when you're playing this particular passage, which is at about two minutes on this video, 
uh, make sure you're listening to the piano's melody because they have the melody. So kind of back off a little bit and let it let the piano come out. And then that way, what it does is it gives an, an interplay between the piano and the violin, and it makes it sound a lot more interesting to the audience. So make sure you're aware of when the piano has the melody and back off a little bit on that. That'll, that'll um, help a lot. Okay, and then I think the rest of it is pretty much the same. So uh, give those ideas some thought. Ask me some questions if you have any on, my, on the, the video channel. Otherwise, best of luck. <laughs>